Hi there, and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe, a channel where I share with you guys my journey as a beginner machinist. So if you're new to machining or just interested in it, then please consider subscribing to the channel because on this channel I try to share as much information as I can with you guys just to make your experience on the lathe or milling machine that much better. So following on from last week's video, I made a set of these T-nuts and I'm yet to drill and tap these just because the pure fact I haven't really got an accurate way of tapping a hole in these yet on the milling machine. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. I'm going to be making a tap follower so once I've drilled these holes I can hold my tap at a 90 degree angle to the hole and tap a really good accurate hole. Other than using the tap follower on the milling machine you could also make one of these if you've got a lathe as well. You can tap holes without a tap follower, but it's a little bit more awkward just because you've got to move the tailstock every time you rotate the tap. So by making a tap follower, it makes this process a lot easier. So what are we waiting for? Let's get on with it. So I'm going to be making this tap follower out of this 20 mil mild steel bar that I've got and I'm just cutting it down now to the length that we need and that is 150 millimetres. Cha-ching! So with our workpiece cut and chucked up in the lathe we can start to see how the parts are going to lay out on this piece of material. So the first section here, 55 millimetres of this this is going to be the body for our tap follower. After that, the next 15 millimetres is going to be the end cap that screws into the end of the body. And then finally down here, we've got 40 millimetres of stock, which we need to turn down to a really fine nose, which is actually going to sit on the end of the taps. That's what needs to be accurate, because that's going to set the tap follower at a 90 degree angle to the workpiece. So now we've got all this laid out, we need to start turning it down. So what I'm going to do is face off in tradition and then begin turning down the workpiece until we start to get something that resembles a tap follower. Right then, with the end faced off, I can now centre drill that so I can get some tail support in there and pull my workpiece out. So with our live centre now in place, we can allow for a little bit more stick out. And we're going to be working on machining the body and the cap now. So this is almost at final outer diameter anyway. It's just over 20 mil and I was aiming for around about 20 mil. So I'm literally just going to do a light skim pass all the way down it. I'm only going to dial in, what should we say, 0.05 millimeter depth of cut. So taking off 0.1 mil overall and we'll see what finish we have after that. Let's turn my power feed on. And away we go. So we haven't quite taken off all the material there. So as we want this to be as concentric as possible, we'll go back to the beginning and we'll dial in another 0.5 millimeter depth of cut. So that seemed to have machined it all that time. Really good finish because I'm using my power feed modification. So it's really consistent and that's bang on what we need it to be. So that's the overall diameter sorted for our body. So next thing I want to do now is drill this out to a six mil hole 
and this six mil hole only needs to go 10 millimeters deep doesn't matter if we go further because from the other side we're going to be drilling it out to a 10 mil hole but for now this side needs to be six mil so i think i'm going to go in with a four mil and then after that just open it up with a six mil And there we have it then, that's our final sized hole for that end. Next process I need to do now is part off my work. So I'm just going to butt my parting off tool up to the chuck, just to make sure we've got all that straight. And with that straight we can tighten that down. So I'm going to use my DRO now to find out how far along I've got to come to do this. So I want this to be 55 millimetres long but I'm gonna to have to add two mil for the carbide tip that we've got on here. So we're looking for 57. So 57 there, we can now lock, we can lock our carriage. So now just gotta plunge into this work and part this off. So nearly had a bit of an accident there. The parting tool blade snapped. Luckily I was running the lathe slow enough that it just locked up and didn't cause any damage. So I just swapped the blade out and now we're back to parting off. So now we've got the main body here of the tap follower. This is gonna be the end that the uh, pointy bit comes out which is actually gonna locate on the tap. So we need to drill a hole in this end. So this is currently 55 millimetres and I need to drill a 10 mil hole all the way through down to about here, down to 50 mil. So I've faced off this end after parting it off because there's a little nubbin in the middle and now I'm going to centre drill it and begin boring that out to 10 millimetres all the way down to 50 mil along the stock. As this is going to take a little bit of time I'm going to come back when I've got all that drilled out and the only thing I've got left to do is ream it. So I've got my 10 mil hole drilled 50 mil through now and I'm just going to finish it up by reaming it out. This should hopefully clean up any little bits that the drill bit made a bit rough and make a really accurate 10 mil hole. Even though we really need a 10.2 10 mil is going to be good enough. So next thing I need to do is I need to tap a hole into this M12. I only need to go in 10 millimeters, so I don't need to go in that far, which is good. And ironically, we could really do a tap follower now to do this next process. But as I haven't yet made one, because I'm in the process of doing it, we're going to have to do it the old fashioned way. So if you haven't made yourself a tap follower yet, you can use this setup here. So I've basically got a dead centre here, my tap going into the hole. And basically what I'm going to do is as I rotate the work, I'm just going to wind my hand wheel in just to keep the tension on the back of the tap. Next, we need to move on to the cap that screws onto the end of the body. So currently this is 19.9 millimetres. We need to turn down 10 millimetres of this to about 11.8 so we can run a die down it and create an M12 thread. So that's what we need to do next. So to do this, I'm just going to touch off on it and zero my DRO. So now I need to just machine down this until it's about 11.6. So we need to take off roughly 10 millimeters.
So with that all turned down now to about 11.8 millimeters it came out at, I can run my M12 die down it. So this is a lot easier because I've actually got a proper die holder now. So it should make doing this really easy. So with the die now run down there, we can now test to see if our body screws on. And that screws on there quite nice. So a little tip that I've seen online is to get this join to seem really small, you can actually go down this with the two joined and almost like do a finishing pass and that should make this join here a lot smaller. So I'm going to do that now. I think I'm just going to add some tail support though because we have got a bit of stick out. And it's a little bit less noticeable now. I think we'll just do one more pass on that. Right then, after a few passes and cleaning it up with some emery paper, that join is pretty much non-existent now. So that's great, that's the body and the end cap all done. So I just need to part this off now, and once that's done we can work on making the end bit that's actually going to attach onto our taps. And it's just dawned on me that I've got some 12mm, 12L14 I think it is, mild steel. So I'm going to make the nose out of this just because it's going to be a lot easier and a lot less material to turn down. So what I'm going with is I'm going with 10 mil of material up here and then 40 mil down here. The 40 mil will be 6 mil and the 10 mil will be 10 mil. So to start with, I'm going to turn all of this down to 10 mil and then step down and do the 6 mil next. And then once all that's done, I'm going to put a 60 degree tapered nose on it which should fit into our taps lovely. And because this is machining mild steel, this should machine really nice. So we're looking for 50 mil on our DRO. That's gonna be the stop point. Round about there. And now we're just gonna keep doing this in, I'm gonna do 0 0.25 millimeter increments just so I've got a lot of stick out here. So now that turned down to 10 millimeters, I can carry on turning the rest of this down to six mil. So that's another four millimeters to take off. So I'll pop back when I'm closer to that dimension. So we're coming up to our final pass now. And once this is done, we can try a test fit. So I've done a lot of this project on the power feed that I'm modified for this machine. And I tell you what, it's working an absolute treat. Giving such consistent feed, it's given a really good surface finish. So let's take this all the way to the end now. And I'll finish that last bit by hand. Right, let's see how that fits. So with my pin all within tolerance now, I can go about cutting the taper on the end. So what I've done, I've set my compound slide here to 30 degrees and I've locked my carriage. Now I'm just going to carry on winding in with the compound hand wheel and moving in with the cross slide hand wheel as well. Well then, it looks like all the machining we had to do is finished now. 
So I got the tip done quite nicely on here and I just parted it off and I left a little nubbin on the end actually just to help the spring locate. So that is everything that we need machined. Springs rolling off there. And this is the order that it's going to assemble together. So I'm now going to put this together, lock tight the end cap on and then that is our tap follower all but done. This just slides in here. Spring then goes down there and I'll just quickly grab some Loctite on here. So there's some 262 Loctite. Now I'm going to screw that all together. Tight enough, as tight as I can with my hand. And we're done. The tap follower is all finished. So the only thing left to do really now is test this out. So let's see how that goes. Right then, the way I see this basically working is I get the tip centred to the hole that I want to tap. Knowing that is central to that hole, I can then insert my tap. So there we have it then, my tap follower is all done and I'm really happy of how this one turned out. Seems to be working lovely, looking at it, that tap looks perfectly square to my workpiece. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys, it's been a little bit longer than my normal videos, hope most of you have stayed to the end and enjoyed it. So stay tuned because in the next video hopefully the DRO will turn up for the milling machine so I can get on with fitting that and get a little bit more used to the milling machine because I'll be able to accurately measure in millimetres the X and Y position. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.